Hey everyone, it's Jim from Fowls and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in tube lab number 36, we're going to take a look at the Sylvania Jan 6SL7 WGT. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. And if you're enjoying these videos, please hit the like button and subscribe. Okay, it's going to be well worth staying till the end because I've got a big summer sale announcement to make. And first, we've got a bit of housekeeping. It should now be a lot easier to check out from the store and pay with either a credit or a debit card. A big thank you to my son, Charles, who did the upgrade. The 6SL7 has become an important tube that I specialize in, mainly due to the R8 amp, which refuses to sing beautifully without a nice matched pair. So I spent a lot of time listening to various versions of this tube, and so far have identified two superb versions, the Melts and the Sylvania both, not surprisingly, from the 1950s. There's something really magical about many of the better quality manufacturers' tubes that came out of that period. And I've got one more tube to add to the list. Another Sylvania, but with some differences. Let's take a look at the data sheets. Now, I know you haven't seen these sheets in a while, and you probably said, geez, I was hoping Jim forgot about them. <laughs> I know they're a bit boring, but whenever I design and build, I'm always pulling these things out. So it's good to get used to them. So this is a G for the 6SL7GT. Note that they put the 12SL7 on the same sheet. It's the same tube, just a different heater voltage, yeah? Okay. Maximum ratings. Plate voltage is 300. Plate dissipation is 1.0 watts. And I think, wow, that sounds low, doesn't it? Well, it is. Remember, this is a twin triode, and its primary job is as a voltage amplifier, not a current amplifier. Output tubes, like the EL34, they've got to push a lot of current, and they'll have to dissipate a lot of heat. And, of course, they'll have a much higher rating. Now, maximum ratings are great to keep an eye on, but it's really the typical operation that we want to look at. So typically it'll run at 250 volts on the plate. Minus 2 will be the grid voltage, that's how we bias the tube. Amplification factor will be a nominal 70. Now that is a gain of 70. So if we took, uh, for example, 1 millivolt on the input, we could expect at maximum 70 millivolts on the output, right? Now, you never run a tube at maximum, but it's just to give you an idea what the potential is. And to do some comparisons, the uh, 6SN7 and its close later relative, the 12AU7, have a nominal gain of 20. And the tube that took over the duty for much of what the 6SL7 used to do is the 12AX7, and it has a nominal gain of 100, and the slightly less um, gain of version of the 12AX7 is the 12AT7. That was a bad sentence, but anyways, you get the meaning. <laughs> uh, the 12AT7, Ed, has the same gain, 70, as the 6SL7. Okay, let's look at the data sheet for the 6SL7 WGT. So this is the, this is the mil spec tube. This is a tongue saw. I looked long and hard for the Sylvania version because that's the tube that we're going to talk about today and I couldn't find it. Now, generally speaking, the same tube designation is uh, cross platforms. So a tongue saw WGT will be normally the same as the Sylvania, but I'm not 100% sure in this case and we'll talk about that in a minute. What does a tongue saw say? It says that its primary used as a resistance coupled amplifier. Well, that's just all audio amplifiers, so that's good, right? 
And then it says this tube is intended for applications where severe conditions of vibration and mechanical shock are encountered. That sounds a lot like a mill spec tube to me, doesn't it? Now, sometimes a heavy duty tube can do good things for audio, but it's never a guarantee. Sometimes, you know, a mill spec tube can sound really flat and lifeless. So you got to take it on a case by case basis. So how do the maximum ratings compare? Well, the plate voltage is down a little bit from 300. It's actually at 275, but the plate dissipation is up slightly, 10% to 1.1 watts. Basically, the specifications for the two tubes are very much the same. Okay, let's take a look at the physical tubes. So, let's look at the melts first. And of course, it's got a metal base that tells us right away that it's mill spec. Now, these bases were probably some kind of an alloy of aluminum and zinc or something like that because they're fairly brittle. And they'll get these little kind of non-structural cracks in them. Never had one come apart. But if you see a metal base, it's almost always a mill spec tube. And let's see if you can see the date code. It, I love melts labels, but they just, they came off so easily. And those Russian and Ukrainian wholesalers, they love to clean tubes. And of course, they just wipe the labels right off. Can you see that? 1955. Notice I'm not touching the label. It's really tough to catch, even in a high def picture. Anyways, we've got um, a typical elevated black uh, oval T plate. And a pair, of course, because there's two tubes in one envelope with two rivets on each each wing. Here's the Sylvania. And it's if it looks familiar, it should, because it looks a lot like the bad boy, the 6SN7, made in the same decade, same bottom getter with a really large, what I call a waist chrome. And in, but instead of an elevated black T plate, we have an elevated oval T plate, which is very, this is a very common pattern for the 6SL7. And uh, I was actually talking in a previous tube lab about some of the history of tubes, and it turns out one of the great innovations was the, the oval plate uh, contributed to increasing the maximum gain potential of tubes. Okay. Now... Let's start with the box. You know, I love vintage boxes. They tell a story. Many, many tubes, especially the Russian tubes, uh, don't arrive with anything. Uh, and the ones that do arrive with a little cardboard, you know, wrap around it with maybe a factory stamp. And if you're lucky, a date. <laughs> and maybe an inspection code. So we've got a nice generic box, which is very typical of all Sylvania mill spec tubes tells us what the tube is. It's the WGT. Tells us who made it. But most importantly, look at that. It gives us a pack date. 776. Okay. Let's have a look at that tube. That's just the one from the box. Look at the manufacturer date code. Seven, can you see it? It's tough. It's on black. 7639. So... 39th week of 1976, which matches the box. Yeah, that's why boxes are so great. Now, this is typical of all three types of WGT, or mil-spec 6SL7 Sylvania tubes I've got in stock. I've never seen them any different than this. And what they've got is a short, stubby, reinforced black plate in this case. You see it's got two horizontal ribs, and it's got really stout, short little wings. Now look underneath here. Can you see below the mica? You see all those uprights? The mica and the plates are anchored really solidly to a very short sort of upright. And as a result, even though this thing is designed to handle um, lots of G's, uh, lots of vibration, there's no uh, whiskers or mica spacers on the upper mica. It's it's so close and so well anchored that it's it doesn't require them. And can you see, we've got on a nice stock, we've got a really large, let me get it in there, halo getter. Can you see that? And with a large halo getter, we get a big chrome dome. Okay. 
We've got an older version here. We know that because it's got the um, the older version standard plastic base. It's brown in this case. Brown bases uh, from many manufacturers almost always meant mil spec. This label's intact, so we know that it's a Jan tube. And in, instead of a black plate, it's got a gray plate, but the plates are identical. And instead of a large halo getter, it's got a large, uh, in this case, I would call that a large U or D getter. I call that a U. And of course, a large chrome dome. And we've got a little newer version because it's got the shorter standard plastic base. And in this case, it's got the same plate structure, but they're black and the same getter and another large chrome dome. Okay, so that's what they are physically. Well, enough of the, all this all this stuff. Let's get into how they sound. Okay. I'm going to bring out the actual listening notes because they're always instructive. In earlier tube labs I used to just summarize them, but I think I'm going to start using them because people actually read them as I'm talking about them. And somebody made a comment the other day about something that I made on the listening notes and he said, what about that? And I said, yeah, you're right. That was a that was a, a big issue. I think it was in EL34 I talked about, in which I underlined smooth. So these are made on the fly. We talked about that in a previous tube lab. And when I started, I actually made up three sheets because I got three different tubes. They look the same, and I suspect that they would be the same. And as I started listening to all three, I realized that they were the same. So I combined, I started off with the 1976 and I went to the older tubes after that and I just made some notes on the side here and I'll do that quite often if I'm doing really close comparisons to similar tubes and I'll make just a little check or a little written note and in this case well we'll get to that so so bass was very good nice tone clarity underlined three times neutral it, with bass having a very clear bass sound is actually not that common. The better tubes, yes. Uh, middle of the road tubes, it starts to get a little bit muddy. And in fact, in some, some, some tubes in which um, you get a very affordable tube, uh, the Electro Harmonix EL34 is an output tube, but it's a classic example of this. It loses a little bit of clarity and you see that starting right away in the base. It's a good solid tube, but it's just an affordable good solid tube, right? There's nothing ultra fantastic about it. Well, that's not a fair way to call it. I would call it a great budget tube. How about that? Okay, moving on, mid-range. Very good, CCC, which I always, it's my short form from crisp, um, clean and clear. I, I often mix up which way I say that, but it, essentially it's the same thing. It, one doesn't lead to the other, right? Neutral. Not warm. We'll get back to that in a minute. Very engaging with excellent sound stage. So, what did I mean by not warm? Well, a lot of better quality tubes have a really warm, uh, lovely mid-range. Some people, and some of the finer tubes, some people will call it liquid gold, like listening to liquid gold. I'm not sure that's a great analogy, but um, the, the mid-range will be smoother. It'll have more um, even harmonics to fill out the sound. And for a lot of people, that's what they're into with tubes. Now, in the case of these tubes, the mid-range sounds lovely, but it is more towards the clean, clear, and crisp than it is towards the the warm and, let's say, slightly syrupy. And it's quite distinctive. In fact, a lot of tubes go into either category. A, a cleaner, clearer presentation or one that is a warmer, richer presentation. I even have two prototype preamps, and one does, does the warm, and one does the more um, a detailed um, presentation. Okay, treble. Very nice plus. The three C's and neutral again. Now, not surprisingly, 
Microphonics are low, but all of these these mil spec tubes have about a 20% higher gain than the normal GT version. And that's why we were looking at the data sheets. And the data sheets don't show that, do they? Which is why I suspect that maybe the Sylvania data sheet would show us a higher nominal gain and why I was searching it out. Um, and the way I found this out is that I actually, when I started testing, I, I built a special section onto my GM tester. And the, the mil spec tubes were pegging the needle. And I thought, well, I need to reorganize the sensitivity rating. So what I did was I derated the standard 6SL7s. So now a nominal 80 is a, is a new old stock reading. And a nominal 100 is the GT tubes, the sorry, the, the mil spec, the WGT tubes. So with, um, with that higher gain, the noise floor is going to come up slightly. Not a lot, it's just a fact of life. It's a big problem with 12AX7s and other high gain tubes is that right off the bat with that kind of a gain, 100 to 1, in this case 70. I think this is closer to, if it's 20%, we're talking about 85 to 1. Or 1 to 85, right? Um, so, it's not an issue. I have extremely sensitive speakers, and I noticed it, but only just barely. Okay, in conclusion, I said, uh, stereo image was superb, exclamation, exclamation mark. Excellent sound stage. Detail, detail, detail. Music just pops. Now, when you have the three C's and good clarity in the bass, you're, you're often going to have a really good stereo image. They go hand in hand. And with a good stereo image and that level of clarity, and you get good detail, you're going to find that the sound stage is often very good, sometimes superb. They're all linked together. Now, the other brown bases, they're over here, and they basically clocked in the same. There's some minor differences. Some of it could be due to the age of the tube, um, the gain factor of the tube. It's tough to balance the exact same listening volume, but basically I think they're very much the same tube. So I put them all together, essentially, one one quick mini review. Okay. So, if you've stayed, oh yeah, sorry, I wanted to talk about, um, I wanted to talk about the tubes that came in. So, these are why we're talking about the mil spec WGTs. I, for a long time, I've, I've admired this tube but I haven't had very many in stock. In fact, the ones that I've had in stock, they've, um, they've just, people have been buying them, even though I don't recommend them, and they, they're just gone. I just can't keep them, essentially. And they're, they're rare enough that it's tough to find any. So I got, <laughs> I got six in, so I thought, it's time to talk about them. <laughs> um, I mean, normally I don't talk about a tube until I have, you know, like 100 in stock. Um, and a, you know, a good chance to, to try them all out. The only ones of this type I've ever seen are the Sylvanias. Now, we just saw a Tungsol data sheet, so we know Tungsol made them. I just haven't, I've never had one in stock. Um, so, a bunch of these came in, and believe it or not, that, that allowed me to get two matched, or two matched pairs, and I think I've got one matched pair of each of these. And that's it. That's all that's in stock. Um, what else came in? Oh yeah. Have a look at this. This is interesting. This is, of course, one of my favorite EL34s. This is a Svetlana, a vintage Svetlana. And many of them come in rebranded Marshall. Marshall amps, of course. And this is, I think, the oldest one I've ever had in. Most of them come in with gorgeous um, gold lettering. Big bold Marshall up the side or across the top like this. 
And this is done in an older kind of chalk paint that, you know, as you can see, they, it doesn't take much for it to wear off. And it's the only major rebrand I see with the Svetlana tube. I think there's a couple of others, but Marshall is the common one. I would say about, oh, close to 10% of the vintage Svetlanas that come in, come in rebranded Marshall. Same exact tube, of course. So I think Marshall had an equipment uh, buy deal with Svetlana back in the day um, that spanned uh, at least uh, probably two decades because I've seen three different generations of labeling. Anyways, the more of these come in, of course, the more quads. I sell quads of these constantly. People love this tube. It's, in my opinion, it's the it's the most affordable, best vintage EL34 made. There are other EL34s of the same period that are com sort of comparable in sound, very quite similar, but they're just not available. They're, they, I have a feeling Svetlana made by far the most EL34s in this time period, um, probably tens of thousands of tubes. And as a result, they're available on um, uh, vintage. Okay, let's put that down. Now, if you stayed till the end, um, here's the big summer sale. It starts today. Let's hold that steady. And it'll be 15% off the entire store. Summer is Sunday, of course, uh, the longest day of the year. And it's something to celebrate, in my opinion. And it's also the beginning of the slow season for online retail tubes. Um, and the summer code is summer 2021. Nice and simple, right? And remember, I've got flat rate $20 shipping around the world. And if your order is $150 or more, uh, the shipping's on me, folks. That's after discount, of course. Uh, and if you've, um, if you've been following the prices of vintage tubes, you know that they've been going up incredibly fast. So if there's something that you really like in your system, now is a good opportunity to buy backups. Okay, everyone, stay safe. This is Jim from Vows and More signing off. Cheers, everyone.